Uh, and any qu other questions? Finally, 2892, please. 2892 creates the Mental Health Field Response Team Grant Program administered by the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs. There are no amendments. Well, I'll use my editorial privilege and say that's my favorite bill. Are there any questions? This okay. is your favorite bill? Absolutely. We're going to have law enforcement interacting with those with mental health crisis more effectively. Do they, do they have a mental health specialist on the team? Well, that's the whole idea. The, the idea is to expand these uh, to provide funding. That's the key. So this bill will very likely go to the Appropriations Committee to provide funding for law enforcement to expand mm -hmm. what we call mental health field response using mental health professionals along with law enforcement. Okay, uh, we will recede to caucus. How many minutes do you think uh, you're going to need? We're going to go down to number three on the list, House Bill 2892, Mental Health Field Response. Let's have a report, please. House Bill 2892 relates to the creation of a new grant program. The bill requires WASPIC to develop and implement a mental health field response team grant program, and the purpose of the program is to assist local law enforcement agencies with developing and operating mental health field response team capabilities by utilizing mental health professionals to professionally, humanely, and safely respond to encounters involving persons with mental health issues. Grants are awarded to local law enforcement agencies based on locally developed proposals to incorporate mental health professionals into the agency's mental health field response. To the extent possible, at least one grant recipient um, should be from Eastern Washington and one from Western Washington. Grant recipients must include at least one DSHS designated mental health professional who, who will perform professional services. And a mental health professional may assist patrol officers in the field or in an on-call capacity, provide training on best practices, or provide other services. WASPIC must submit an annual report on the, on the program, including information on grant recipients, use of funds, participation of mental health professionals, and feedback from the grant recipients and the Washington State Institute for Public Policy must conduct a study on whether the use of the mental health field response improves outcomes of interactions with persons experiencing behavioral health crises. That concludes my briefing. I'm happy to respond to questions. Thank you very much. Does the uh, members have any uh, questions of staff? I'm very excited that we're hearing this bill, although it happens to be the last day of our hearing bills. Uh, I believe it's very important. We're working with the gentleman from the 44th and the uh, gentleman from the 10th on uh, improving our ways that uh, ways that uh, law enforcement can respond to mental health crisis in the field. So please proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank Kelly for explaining the bill so well. For the record, my name is John Lovick, and I represent the 44th Legislative District in Snohomish County. And I know you have a tight schedule, so I really appreciate you hearing this bill. Mr. Chairman, if you will recall, on September 17th, you and I were driving to Yakima, and I don't know if the other members here have had the opportunity to be in a car with you, but you do most of the talking, and that was the way it was that day. <laughs> But uh, the, the interesting thing about it was that you kind of discussed uh, this concept with me and what your vision was for this. Exactly a week later, I was at the Everett Gospel Mission. I go up a couple of times a year and I cook for the uh, homeless men there. And I was outside cooking and uh, I saw a police officer drive up. And he, I recognized him, but I didn't recognize the passenger in the car. He was an Everett police officer. What impressed me the most was how they handled whatever they were dealing with there. Uh, he got out of the car and made the initial contact, and then she basically took over, and she was a mental health professional. Uh, and I later found out that one of the things that they were also there to do was to get food for uh, the vulnerable people in the community and to handle some situations there. Um, I, I think what I like about this uh, proposal was that when we pair our mental health professionals, I think that we can uh, see that three things will happen. First of all, it will improve the initial interaction on these difficult calls of service, improves safety for our officers and persons in crisis and the bystanders, and I believe we can quickly connect people with services in lieu of booking them into jail. Our current, current system works, but I think it is a system that is very expensive and at times can be ineffective. Uh, jails are not designed to be mental health treatment centers, we often end up releasing those in crisis back into the community where they started the crisis. And I would really encourage your support on this, and I really appreciate working with you and the other members of yeah. this committee. Thanks very much for working on this. Um, I fully support it, as you can see. I'm a co-sponsor. So, Do we have any questions? Thanks very much. I need you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all you of you for the great work you're doing. probably get back to the taskmaster across the hall there, right? Thank you. So, yeah. 
task mistress. Uh, let's hear from James McMahon and Logan Barr, please. And we got our 911 dispatchers on deck. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. I'm James McMahon, Policy Director with the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs. Uh, very pleased to be in strong support of this bill. Uh, mental health field response is our number one uh, legislative priority for you all this year. Uh, you have heard me say for the last several years that public or, um, that uh, mental health is quickly becoming Washington's number one public safety issue. And I think I can safely say today, mental health is Washington's number one public safety issue. Uh, I think we all agree that somebody in a mental health crisis is not in and of themselves by virtue of their crisis committing a crime, yet our system continues to send law enforcement officers uh, as its only response 24 hours a day, seven days a week for those who are in crisis. Um, and this bill changes that. Um, it sends help to those who need help because they need help. They don't just need a police officer. Um, we want to help those folks. Um, we don't want to have physical confrontations with them. We want to put a trained mental health professional in front of them to help them through their crisis. Um, this bill gets us started on that. Uh, I couldn't commend it to you more. Can you talk a little bit about the different models of field response? And what we're, I think the intention of this bill is to uh, really provide funding uh, for uh, expansion of current efforts from local law enforcement. But I've heard of a number of different models, uh, uh, mental health professionals and law enforcement as uh, partners, mm -hmm. as a team, uh, spending the day and night together, uh, being dispatched to call after call, or uh, crisis response teams, uh, law enforcement going to a scene and then calling mental health professionals to the scene. I don't know if one is more efficient or effective than another, or just comment a little bit about the different models. Sure. So so you hit the nail on the head at least halfway in that this, this bill is about funding. I think this bill is also about data and evaluation, because we want to make sure that this works as well as, as it seems to in jurisdictions that are using it. But we want to make sure that this works and we're not just spending money for the sake of spending money. But to your question about the models, I think the, the the original version uh, that, uh, Mr. Chair, you had sponsored, I think was built off of what we call the Seattle model, um, where the Seattle Police Department has the density of officers that they have the flexibility to say, this officer, in fact, I, I think it's five officers in Seattle, you are our crisis response team, and we'll take this mental health professional, and we're going to locate them within your team, and they sit in the front passenger seat of a police car, the mental health professional does, and, and they go together. And Seattle has the ability to, to set that team aside so they're not... They're not responding to 911 calls um, that aren't related to, to mental health crises. Um, they've got the ability to do that. Take some of the jurisdictions that, um, that those who are uh, currently serving law enforcement officers in and many others across the state, that model doesn't work because oftentimes there are only two or three officers on shift, uh, on duty for that particular shift. And heaven forbid the one that's got the mental health professional sitting in their passenger seat finds a drunk driver along the way. Now they're both offline for four hours. Um, and and that, that diverts the entire program and, and sidelines it for that period of time. And so what we wanted to do in crafting this version of the bill is enable both of those models to be allowed through this and not simply require the Seattle model because uh, we want other jurisdictions to benefit from this as well. And so some of them call... Um, uh, Oh, shoot, I've, um, not the rover, I forget what the name will come to you, the navigator uh, model where um, they will have the, the mental health professional respond at the request of either dispatch or at the request of a, another law enforcement officer. Um, to have them come. Sometimes they'll give them their own car. They'll be at the station. Some uh, some models actually send the mental health professional on proactive visits to what we all refer as frequent flyers. Um, we like I, to say familiar faces. Familiar faces. Thank you. Uh, flyers, very please. very uh, much better put than mine. Uh, to those familiar faces, because sometimes a little bit of proactive outreach can avoid the crisis entirely. Um, I think uh, it was Thurston County, I was talking to the 911 director and they said, there is one person in, in our community that if he takes his medications that morning, we save at least 100 911 calls that day. 
And so they're working to find somebody to, to go to this person's house and say, hey, how's it going today? Have, have you taken your medicine today? Um, and so we think that this kind of a system would enable that kind of proactive outreach, as well as the follow-up on the back end to ensure that those folks are getting the services that they truly need. Okay. President Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. James, um, I really appreciate hearing about some of the variation of uh, a couple of the different models that exist around the state, um, especially the community caretaking function that you just described. Um, and I'm just re reviewing the bill again. As you know, I'm number two on here, and I have read it, but it's been a little while. Um, but has, has there been proposals or has there been models out there where, part, where agencies are partnering together, like um, uh, in jurisdictions that might be a little bit more rural but have a, have a significant-sized city with them where a county and a municipality are partnering together to provide these services on a, on a countywide basis but with a local, you know, you know, I think of maybe, uh, oh heck, I don't know, Grant County and uh, and what's the largest county in Kennewick? Frank, Frank oh, Pasco. Franklin, Franklin and Pasco partnering together to have this program and collect the data in that fashion instead mm -hmm. of focused specifically on one municipality. So if I remember correctly, there is a sentence, and I, I didn't bring anything up here to reference the bill. Uh, if I remember correctly, there is a sentence that allows multiple jurisdictions to partner together to submit an application. And we actually see that. I think they're using some federal funds, City of Grandview, City of Yakima and County of Yakima actually share one FTE who is a mental health professional. And I forget how it is that the Grandview chief was telling me how they've, how they've divvied up her time. Um, but, but that's exactly what, what they do and certainly something that we would want to enable through this program. Representative Worrell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate your work on these creative models in adding mental health. I'm assuming most of the, the calls, maybe 45, 40, 50 percent may have mental health, if you could comment on that. And are you familiar with FD Cares, which is the fire department has a mental health professional and they identify high utilizers of 911 and do you see this being kind of similar or something you could partner with? So that was, uh, if I can answer, if I can not answer your first question, I don't know off the top of my head the, the percent of those calls, um, but I can tell you that um, mental health and chemical dependency have uh, an incredible influence on on the folks that, that our officers deal with day in and day out. Um, so we're hopeful that, that this will help them because um, that's that's ultimately what we all want to do, right? Um, and I have talked to uh, our counterparts at the Fire Chiefs Association about FD Cares um, and some of the, the, the work that they're doing there. I think it's very similar um, to some of the proactive stuff that we're talking about here. But I think some of the difference is we're also talking about the, the very crux, the, the most um, critical point in this, the, in this program, is to have that mental health professional there on scene at the moment as the, as the, the person that we're dealing with is in crisis. Um, because again, we, we want to reduce the number of violent interactions that folks have with law enforcement, and we want to increase the availability of help for those who need help. Yeah, I believe the FD Cares uh, program is more sort of for the low acuity uh, and, and yet frequent. Uh, sorry, familiar faces, <laughs> uh, or even but but uh, chronic utilizers. Uh, I don't know. I like familiar faces. It sounds like yeah. Logan, please. Uh, we're running out of time. Here, so. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I'm Logan Barr with the Association of Washington Cities. Uh, we're in full support of the bill, and I had intended to talk about the various models that are used and the value of data collection, and that was thoroughly covered by the committee and by James. So I'll just say that this is a top priority for AWC. After years of not really being a priority at all, this is, uh, ha has really come to the fore with many of our members, and uh, many of them have sought policy solutions that we're talking about today, and this bill would, would really move the ball down the field on providing some resources to, to better serve these populations, as well as providing some, some data around them. We see cities as policy innovation um, mechanisms, as agents, and this is, I think, a great marriage between the state and locals in uh, really responding to the needs of our communities. Thank you. Thank you very much to both of you, and uh, appreciate it. We're going to move this one forward, I hope. Let's hear from the 911 dispatchers, um, Keith Fluelling and, uh, and Carl Hatton. 
Again, we are uh, short on time, so. Uh, we'll make our comments brief then. Uh, thank you, Chair Goodman and uh, committee members. My name is Keith Llewellyn. I am the director of Thurston County 911, and I'm also representing APCO NINA, the Association for 911 Centers here in Washington State. Uh, we thoroughly support this uh, effort, and we thank you for your efforts in this regard. Uh, mental health is a big issue for 911 centers. Um, you call them frequent, uh, you call them familiar faces, we call them familiar voices. We hear them all the time. Uh, and as uh, Mr. McMahon alluded to, uh, we have uh, several individuals in every community in Washington um, that utilize the 911 system um, when they are in crisis, and sometimes uh, that relates to times when they're not on their medications, and we know that that is the issue and that is the cause. That aside, uh, what we're asking today is that this legislation go forward and that we continue to include the 911 industry in that pilot project uh, or pilot projects so that we move that ball upstream a bit so that we can gain efficiencies from knowing at the front end on the phone calls um, when we need mental health professionals and how we can fit into those pilot projects. I'm going to let uh, Carl uh, uh, expand on how we can be more effective in that regard. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. My name is Carl Hatton, and I'm uh, the Regional Emergency Communications Director for both Jefferson and Clallam County, so I run the two 911 centers there. I'm also the president of our Washington State chapter of APCO and NINA, and I support this as well. Um, I wanted to thank Representative Goodman and Representative Lovick for including 911 in part of the discussions in helping to generate this and come up with some ideas and, and to roundtable that. I appreciated that 911's voice was heard in that. Um, oftentimes, 911 <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we don't get a lot of uh, opportunity to provide inputs, and so we very much appreciate that because this does touch directly on 911 and call taking. Um, we would like to. Uh, to include in this that um, we are the first point of contact almost always. There are officers do find uh, people in the community as they're driving, but oftentimes these calls come directly to a 911 center. So we want to add to this or, or to uh, expound on this a little bit that 911 is really protocol and uh, guideline driven. And we use guidelines and protocols to help triage calls, to help triage severity, how many officers need to respond, what level of uh, fire or EMS need to respond. And I think we're in a pretty unique position to help triage this and to help in developing that response. And we, we definitely would appreciate being included in that process of determining what that looks like. Um, and to continue, uh, uh, also offering ongoing training for telecommunicators and remembering that we are the first point of contact and that part of our training and development is to help identify those high risk or those mental health calls so that we can help with the appropriate sending of resources, which would include mental health responding with officers. Great. Thanks to both of you for helping educate me about how 911 dispatch works a little bit better. Um, we're going to be taking executive action on this bill in just a couple of days, so there's probably not enough time to find the right language to amend it, but it does move to the next step and then to the House floor, and, and uh, I want to work with you to make sure that we have 911 dispatch included in this uh, project so that uh, you, you know, we understand better how, you know, the, the full continuum of emergency response. So. Thank Perfect. you so Thank much. You. Thank you very much. You bet. Is number 15 on the list, our favorite bill, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that House Bill 2892 be reported off committee with a new pass recommendation. Second. It's been moved and seconded that House Bill 2892. Please, children, please. Uh, be reported out with a due pass recommendation. And um, extremely important bill to expand the law enforcement's uh, capability of responding to mental health crisis in the community which uh, some argue is our number one public safety problem. And uh, any other comments? This is a great bill, everyone's best bill. Okay, uh, so all those in favor of reporting out House Bill 2892, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Let the record reflect that all members are present except for Representative Hayes, which is ex who is excused, and that all members present have voted in the affirmative, and that House Bill 2892 is Reported out with the of the committee with a due pass recommendation.
So uh, with uh, about, let's see, 75 seconds left to go before the end of the meeting.